Hello, I'm Amanda, and welcome back to our final video, Submitting Hard Copy Documents, in our series on participating in Medicare's Durable Medical Equipment, Prosthetics, Orthotics and Supplies, or DEMIPOS, Competitive Bidding Program. In addition to completing Form A and Form B in DBIDS, you must send a package of required hard copy documents to the Competitive Bidding Implementation Contractor, or CBIC. During this video, I will explain what must be included in your package and how to prepare it to send to the CBIC. Remember, we cannot accept late packages regardless of the reason, so it's very important that your package be mailed early in order to be received by the CBIC on or before the close of the bid window. Joining me again today is our first-time bidder, Tommy from Demi Supplies. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Amanda. I'm really glad that you're here to walk me through this process. I have a question. Are all bidders required to submit hard copy documents in order to be considered for a contract? Yes, that's right, Tommy. All bidders must submit their required hard copy documents to be considered for a contract. And some bidders may have to send a few additional documents. But let's start with the financial documents required of all bidders. They are the most current tax return extract, three financial statements, income statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows, and a current credit report and score. Sounds like a lot of documents. Will this be hard to prepare? No, quite the opposite, Tommy. You should already have these financial documents ready to go. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what's needed and when and how the documents should be sent to the CBIC. So you shouldn't find it complicated at all. I'm also going to share some things you should check before sealing up your package. All right, I'm ready. The tax return extract must be for the most current year in which you filed your taxes. That would be either 2013 or 2014. Do not submit the entire tax return, just the required pages according to your business type. You can find out what pages to send on the required financial documents by business type chart. The chart is in the Request for Bids, or RFB, and DBIDS, and also posted on the CBIC website. Well, what do I send if my company is a subsidiary and I don't file my own tax return? In that case, you'd send your parent organization's tax return extract and their financial documents. Be careful you don't send your parent organization's tax return extract and your financial documents. That won't be accepted. Also, financial statements must be submitted at the same level as the tax extract. In your case, you will submit your parent organization's financial statements because you submitted your parent organization's tax return extract. So now let's talk more about those three financial statements. Income statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows. This is important. Your financial statements must cover the same 12-month period, either fiscal or calendar year, as the tax return extract. Let's say you filed a tax return for calendar year 2014. Which financial statements would you send? I'd send the financial statements for calendar year 2014. You got it. And if the tax return was for fiscal year 2013, the financial statements must also represent fiscal year 2013. Individual financial statements for each month are unacceptable. The statements must be prepared on the cash or accrual basis of accounting in accordance with the generally accepted accounting principles, or GAAP. Also, each financial statement must correspond with related statements, and they must total accurately. What do you mean when you say the statements must correspond? Great question, Tommy. For example, the ending cash on the statement of cash flows must equal the ending cash on the balance sheet. And an example for totaling accurately, the total assets on the balance sheet must equal the sum of the total liabilities plus the owner's equity. Does this help? Yes, I have a better understanding now. Thanks. You're welcome. We strongly recommend your financial statements be prepared by an accounting professional. It would also be helpful if you provided the accounting professional with a copy of the RFB. Good idea. I'll be sure to do that. I have another question about financial statements. What would a supplier who has only been in business for six months submit? If your most recent tax return filed was for less than 12 months, you should submit your actual financial statements for those same months and pro forma or prospective financial statements to represent the subsequent months. Together, the actual and pro forma statements must cover a 12-month period. 
Can the actual and pro forma financial information be combined? No. These statements cannot be combined. There must not be any actual data on the pro forma statements and vice versa. Each statement must be separately prepared for the months for which it applies. Now, the last required financial document, the credit report and score. The credit report and score must be prepared no earlier than 90 days prior to the opening of the bid window. The report must include your name, date, and a numerical score. I've seen reports that have a gauge with an arrow. Would that work? No. It must be a numerical score to be acceptable. A credit summary would not qualify as an acceptable report either. Okay. So where do I get the report and score? You must get your credit report and score from one of the following agencies. Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, or Standard & Poor's. Standard & Poor's uses an alphanumeric score, so that's okay. But credit reports from the other agencies must have a numeric score to be acceptable. What do I do if my organization's credit report is not available? If your organization's credit report is not available, a personal credit report with a numerical score for the principal business owner is acceptable in most situations. Refer to the RFB for more information. You said something earlier about some other documents, besides the required financials, that I might have to send to the CBIC. What are those? Good question. There are a few instances when bidders will have to include other documents. If you're bidding as part of a network, your primary network member must submit a network legal agreement and certification statement that you joined the network because you were a small supplier and couldn't independently service the entire CBA. A small supplier would have $3.5 million or less in total annual revenue. If you are a bidder who intends to subcontract, you must also include a letter of intent to enter into a subcontracting agreement or an executed subcontracting agreement. If you are a bidder who has been sanctioned by any government agency, accrediting, or licensing organization within the last five years, you must also include the settlement agreement or corporate integrity agreement. Lastly, if your organization is tax exempt, you must include a copy of your tax exempt certificate or other qualifying documents. Can I include any other documents that are not required that might help you evaluate my bid? There are a few documents that you should not include, such as bank references, personal financial statements, advertising materials, or bank statements. These will be disregarded. But you can include organizational charts or other information that explains your business structure or other details in your financial documents. If you ran out of room explaining your expansion plan and DBIDs, you can also submit that information with your other hard copy documents. I think I understand what must be in my package, but can you tell me how I should submit it? Sure. First thing you need to do is write your bidder number on each page of your documents. You'll find your bidder number in DBIDs. We can't process your bid unless you include the bidder number on all pages of all documents. Then put all documents in one package for each bidder number in loose page format. No binders, folders, paper clips, or staples. That only slows us down. Remember, there's only one reason you'd ever have more than one bidder number. If you're bidding as a primary network member and also independently for a different CBA product category combination, you can review the RFB for more details. And most importantly, your hard copy document package must be received by the CBIC on or before the deadline. We cannot accept any package that is late for any reason. We suggest that you send your package early by a method that can be tracked. We cannot accept faxed or emailed documents. You can find the mailing address and more information in the RFB. Seems simple enough, but is there a checklist I can use to make sure I don't forget anything? Yes. You'll find a hard copy document checklist on the CBIG website to use when you're preparing your hard copy documents. And one more thing that will help you. Make sure you send your financial document package so it's received by the Covered Document Review Date, or CDRD. If your financial documents are received by the CDRD, then you will be notified if any financial documents were missing. You will have an opportunity to submit the missing documents by a specified date. Please understand, though, this covered document review only determines if any financial documents are missing. It is not a review of the accuracy or completeness of the financial documents, and you can only send the financial documents that were identified as missing. 
there's a fact sheet on the CBIG website that gives you more information about the CDRD process. Great. I'll be sure to have my financial documents to the CBIC by the CDRD. Before we go, let's recap some important points to remember when preparing your financial documents. First, the balance sheet must balance and the total assets must equal the sum of the total liabilities and owner's equity. Second, the net income reported on the statement of cash flows must equal the net income reported on the income statement. The ending cash balance reported on the statement of cash flows must equal to the ending cash reported on the balance sheet. A cash reconciliation should be included that reflects beginning and ending cash balances, the net increase or decrease between the two. The net change must equal the change in cash reported on the statement of cash flows. Next, the credit report must be dated and the date must be within 90 days of the bid window. Lastly, financial statements must be submitted for the same 12-month period as the tax extract and be on the same level as the tax extracted. For example, if taxes are filed by the parent company and not the subsidiary, the financial statements and tax extract must be submitted for the parent. Thank you, Amanda. I'm ready. You have really helped me understand the bidding and document requirements and what I need to do. I'll be sure to share this information and the RFB with my accountant. You're welcome. Glad to help. And remember, if you do come across a question or need any additional assistance, don't forget to review the many tools on the CBIG website. You can also call our customer service associates who are ready to help you. And thank you for joining us. I hope you found this and the other videos in the series useful.